Hi there, this is Marhat Dad here again. So now we have to configure the network address translation. So to see if my computer will be able to go to the internet, then I have to configure the wireless. Pot one, create a net rule without interface one. So I don't mean here without, but without interface, uh, which is Ethernet one. What does it mean here? If we go to the router, now we need to create the net. So how to create the net? We have to go to IP and we have to go to firewall. And we have filter rules. That's not what we need to do. We have to create the NAT rule. And I have to say, on general, chain source NAT, that means any source coming from 10.10.10.0 slash .10 24. So any source coming from 10.10.10.0 slash .10 24 going out the interface Ethernet 1. So if you want, I can show you on the picture what I'm saying. I'm saying that any source coming to the router from 10.10 .10 dot 10 dot 0 slash 24 which means my LAN uh, IP addresses and going out from Ethernet 1 to out to the Internet all right so I'm precising that it has to go out from Ethernet 1 all right then the action is to masquerade masquerade means to do the net and then that's it that's all you need to do now if we go to the computer you see here when we tried to ping a dot a dot a dot a it wasn't working let's try to ping again now here we go it is working so now my computer is connected to the internet point number one is done point number two check if your pc is able to go to the internet we've checked and yes it is able to go to the internet but i want to check one more thing so if i open here the ping remember my computer is connected to internet too i take my computer out from internet too so let's move the cable out here you see that the cable is with me in my hand let's open again the ping and i make it extended so you see there is no internet right i will take it now and put it on ethernet 3 because ethernet 3 is also in the bridge to see if it's gonna work on the internet so i just plugged it inside ethernet 3 let's wait a little bit to see what's gonna happen here we go it is working very good i will take out the cable so this is the cable now with me in my hand. It's not working. I put it on Ethernet 4 now. I do have only up to Ethernet 4. So it's plugged inside Ethernet 4. And let's see. Yes, it is working. Very good. Now I'll put it back on Ethernet 2. Now what we need to do is to configure the wireless. I want to configure the wireless because that's the idea that most of the time people will be connecting to our Internet to the wireless and not to the wired. Of course, wired is important on those ports because you may have servers or something that you want to connect them wired, that's fine. But uh, I want also to show you how to configure the wireless. Point number three, connect your phone to the wireless. Is it able to go to the internet? Before we connect it to the wireless, we need to configure the wireless. We didn't configure it yet. So let's go to the router. Now on the interface here, you see we have WLAN1. That's the wireless interface that I put it inside the bridge. First, I have to enable it. So this is enabled. Number two, we have to put a password for this wireless. Remember, when you connect to the wireless, if you don't have password, anyone can use your internet. So we have to create a password, so a passphrase or a key. So we go to the wireless and on security profile, you see over here, security profile. I'll create one. I will name it, let's give it the name of something like whatever, profile one, or maybe we can just make password Wi-Fi. Now, the mode, I want it to be dynamic key. Now you have options WPA, WPA2, PSK, or EAP. In case you are using a radio server, you can use the EAP. But in my case, I want to do the password as uh, PSK. That means it's only a key that I put. Now, which one to choose, WPA2 or WPA? Well, I would say go to WPA2. In case you have some old devices, you may need to go to WPA, but WPA is not secure or as secure as WPA2. And of course, the unicast cipher and group uh, cipher, I always recommend to use AES because they are more secure than TKIP. Now here you have to put the uh, pre-shared key, the, uh, the, the password that people need to put when they connect to the wireless. I would put something one, two, three, four, four, three, two, one. Just that now, because uh, it's a a lab, normally you should put a strong password. Let me show you the password. One, two, three, four, four, three, two, one. 
So this is done. We have created the password. Now how to apply the password? We have to go to the Wi-Fi interface. We double click on it. Before we apply the password, let's check which frequency we have to use because the wireless use frequencies and we only have 2 gigahertz. That means 2.4 gigahertz. That's why some MicroTik routers, they come with 2.4 and 5, but this router has only 2.4 gigahertz. So first let's check which frequency we have to use. We can go to frequency usage. That's very really nice. I make start. I will have to scan my environment now to see which frequencies is less used than I will take it. So if I look here, I see that this frequency 2447, I think that's less used. So 2447. Then I'll come here. I will say frequency 2447. The mode, always you have to put here access point bridge. Of course, you have different modes. This course doesn't cover all of those things. I, I do have other course speaking about wireless on marketing and we speak about all of those modes. But for now, if you want to share internet, please put IP bridge. The band, you have B, only G, B, G, N, and so forth. If you want fast connection, always go to N. B and G, they are um, old somehow. And uh, yeah, most of uh, equipment now they support N, so I will go only N. Now the SSID, I will put something like test MicroTik. This is once you open your phone and you check on the wireless, you can see test MicroTik. And then that's one you connect to it. All right, and do not forget here on the security profile to put the password Wi-Fi that we have created. And that's it. So now, believe it or not, the wireless is working. Let's see now if I connect my phone to this SSID, which is called test MicroTik, and I put the password 12344321 if I'm able to go to the internet. So here is my phone. You can see it. At this moment, I'm not connected to the internet, you see. And this is test MicroTik. Very good. I will click on it. I put the password. Let's open it. One, two, three, four, four, three, two, one. Yeah, and then I will say connect. We wait a little bit. You see, I'm on 4G now and directly. Here we go. I am connected. Excellent. Let's try to do ping. So I will open here the ping tool on my phone. And uh, let's close this advertisement. I go to ping and I ping to a.a.a.a. .a .a. Look, I'm connected to the internet. Excellent. So the mission that I was doing for this course is completely done. And now if you want, I can show you here. If we go from the wireless to the registration, you see this is my phone. It's connected. It's registered. And this is how much bandwidth it, it can get. You see, it's very high because I'm sitting close to the access point. If you want, we can go also to IP DHCP server to the lease. Look, that is my phone, Galaxy Note 8. It has received this IP from the DHCP server, 10.10.10.253. And my PC, which is on Internet 2, received 10.10.10.254. Excellent. Very good. So that is the whole things that I wanted to show in uh, this course. And you see that everything is working perfectly. Point number three is done. And uh, with this point, I have showed you everything, how you can make your MicroTik router to share internet, whether on the wired or on the wireless, and it's working perfectly. So I hope that uh, this lecture was informative for you. And I hope also that you like this course. Please uh, let everyone know about my course. It's free of charge. Anyone can just uh, register to it and watch it. Thank you very much for the time that you have spent with me in this course. I hope you enjoyed the, the time with me and I hope to see you in some other courses that I do. Thank you and bye bye.